17 for 17. So destructive, so heavy-handed. Road grading opponents, another right hand gets around the guard. Uppercut tries to sneak in. There's a hook, there's an uppercut. Better be on the attack. Joe Smith is crumbling again into the ropes. He is in serious trouble here. A primed and ready world champion is being torn down here in round two. Another right hand. Uppercut, big uppercut. He is stumbling and this is over. Arthur Better BF has done it in destructive fashion. That's what Better BF has. Yes, he's a punching machine. He's heavy handed. But look at the timing right there. Joe Smith Jr. from the wrong position, throwing the right hand, dropping the lead hand as he's coming in. Same knockdown here. Timed it perfectly right on the temple, which took the legs of Joe Smith Jr. We saw some IQ and some boxing ability from Better BF today. He had to set those punches up the right way so they could land as flush and as clean as they did to get the, the reaction that he got from Joe Smith. This fight tonight, Joe Smith got hit by the power. He panicked, and whatever game plan he had went out the window, and he accepted the fact that he was going to get knocked out. That's the kind of power that Arthur Better Bev has. And here's the end of the fight right here. Better be of just taking his time, looking for the right kill shot. You see he follows the head, lift him up with uppercuts right up the middle. The referee steps in and said, I've seen enough of this one-sided beatdown. And Archer Better be of is now about to hear it official that he has his third belt. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden, this bout comes to a conclusion at 2 minutes, 19 seconds of round number two for your winner by technical knockout. And now, the WBC, IBF, WBO, light heavyweight champion of the world, Artem Benavidez! He likes to get in range, he'll flick that right jab just to kind of blind the opponent Ooh. because he's really tall for the weight class. To and land there's that left like hand, that. and he's down again. He's up against the ropes, helpless. And he, he does a backflip once the referee, Eric Dali, pushes him off of Carmouche. And you see, this is all about positioning. You know, you see the lead foot outside, the lead foot of his opponent setting it up. Beautiful, nice finish, but the follow-up punches right there. I mean, that was probably unnecessary. You didn't have to throw those punches, but you know what? You're in the midst of the action. And he wasn't down yet. I mean, he wasn't down yet, yeah, but if the ropes wasn't there, you know, uh, Valdez. Oh, big left hook here from um, Shushu Carrington on Stephen Brown. As you see him leaning back against the ropes, and his body language has changed completely here. Yeah, this fight just a matter of time. Shushu is slowly walking down, breaking down Brown. And there it is, a left hook, a double uppercut. The legs are bent, and down goes Brown. Well, I mean, it, it, it's simple. You know, from the previous round, he was dominating. See, that was a frame right there. Setting up, lining up the head for the right hand. But beautiful shot. He had Brown against the ropes. Brown bounced off the ropes and hit him with another uppercut and then another uppercut. Just beautiful placement right there by the young man, Shushu. Boom, right hand, frame that. Left hook. He was hurt right there. Brown was actually knocked out right before he hit the ground. Boom, right hand, uppercut, another left hook. The referee was a tad bit late. Oh, man, that left hook downstairs really hurt Hale, and he follows it up with those shots that put him on his back. That's it. That had to end that way. The courage of Hill was going to help him get up. He just shot the shot right there. He threw his jab. He knew the end was near. Just the uppercut overhand right. That was just, he computed what he needed to do, and he reacted in, in so quickly that Jeremy Hill had no chance to defend himself. Look at that. So he threw the left. His, he was leaned to the left, but he knew he was coming back around with the right hand. He's, he's like two steps up ahead all the time. Just a great combination for Raymond Murataya. Look, this body shot right here. Well, it's an uppercut right hand. I thought it was going to be a left hook in the right hand that was going to end the night. It was actually an uppercut 
and a right hand that ended the night. Beautiful shot right there, right on the chin. Shane Mosley had Oscar De La Hoya's number. Oh, nice body shot there, finally from Floyd Diaz, and it worked. What did I tell you? Seven, He's done. Eight, That's what I told you. Nine, ten. What a knockout from Floyd Diaz. Look, look at it. He came out quick, got the high guard, shot the jab right down the middle, came up high, bow, right into the body. Brought those hands up. Telling you about that high guard. Got to be careful. There it is. You see him def defending right there with Ooh. that high guard. Boom, right in the solar plex. Right between that guard. Beautiful. Let's listen to this. Stay on your ground and counter. That's what you hear from Buddy McGirt, what he's trying to get while Darius oh, is oh. It's that. Yep, stay close enough so you can Three, land. Get him four, the punch. Five, stay close six, enough so you can land. Seven. You hear Buddy McGirt coaching and teaching, and you see Balderas is processing. Oh, another right hand to the right temple. There. And you it's can just so see, quick. Dre, you <laughs> can just see the way he kept throwing and his leg came out from under him as Balderas comes to check on him. Well, that's what he loves. Now he has the right hand as a kill shot. Wow, double threat on both sides. You know, he has the speed. He has the amateur pedigree to go along with him as well. He has the ring savvy, the ring IQ, and landing shots like that that he worked on on the pads, that's unbelievable. Typically, we see left-handed fighters do that. That's what, we, that's what they do to us <laughs> when we throw the right hand. Oh, that left hook drops him. Wow. On his knees, crawling around. And Kenny Bayless says, I've seen enough. Right hand down to the body. You see the foot placement outside. That's where you want to be when you're fighting against a southpaw. Right hand right there on the shoulder, on the chin. Boom. Come around with the left hook. And guess who was coming to his right? Chavez. Check it out right here. Right hand on the shoulder. Chavez is looking for the left hook. Nope. There's a right hand right in between. The right hand of Chavez was down while he was throwing the left hand and right on the money. Isley should be happy with the dominant performance, but he always wants a little bit more. And he talked about needing recognition, Dre. And there it is! That's how you get recognized with the perfect right hand! Now we can see. There you go. Absolutely right. By the right now. We see him stalking, looking, looking at stubs. Just a great count. That doesn't look like a hard shot, but it was on the money. It looked like it hit stubs right on the point of the chin. Boom, right there. And he had the nerve, and I'm talking Troy Izzy, to stay in the fire, allow stubs to open up and move his head off the line and just land that short overhand right, right there. It's hard to get a knockout if you're not willing to be in the fire. That's a temperament thing. Troy Isley was in the fire and let go a beautiful shot right there after he had done all the hard work to set the table. Now it's time to eat, and he ate in a big way tonight. Great performance by Troy Isley. I mean, it was a perfect shot. Let's listen to it. Mm. That traveled a few inches, Bernardo. Just a few. You see Nova here pawing with the jab. You see the right hook that comes around. Got Nova to bag out. Didn't even see the left hand coming straight down the middle as he's retreating with his left hand extended. Right down the middle, right on the button. Boom, parked him right in the corner like a valet driver. My goodness, what a shot. One more time, dip. Right in, straight left hand, right down the middle. Boom. See the head even hit off the canvas as well. Tess, all of this happened because of the great boxing that Ramirez did. So now, Nova doesn't know what's coming. He tries to leave out of the back door without saying goodbye. And Ramirez following him out with that straight left hand because he had already got the distance that he needed. And he knew that Nova makes those kind of mistakes. Here we see it again. 
Watch the feint, the dip feint, the level change. Settle level change right here. Brought the eyes down, then the hook came around, then a straight left hand right down the middle. He never expected that punch. That's why you saw that type of reaction right there. That's what he's doing. He's setting them up. He's letting them work. Now he's using the jab, sticking them on the outside. And here comes the counter. What a left hook. The leg is bent once again from Andujar. What a finish from hometown Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York. Bruce Shoe Shoe Carrington. Look at this. Check this out. The tactical work is how, when, and why you do things. Everything should have a purpose. There's the right hand over the top of the jab. Left hook right on the money, right on the chin. And then you see the defensive effort after the fact from Carrington. Beautiful slip counter right there to the outside. Boom. Let's listen Left hand to on the it. inside. Let's listen to it in real time because it was devastating. I mean, that's the, the beauty of those shots, Dre, is that you end up looking up at those lights here at the Hulu Theater, and Sushu just shines. Final half minute of round number one. Ibera, 28-year-old from Denver, Colorado, four-year pro. So Ali Walsh gets our evening going, and he scores a knockdown in the closing seconds and wins the fight like that that's the right hand test yep nico ali walsh the legend lives on well that legendary name is getting better inch by inch nico was looking for this right hand all night long he threw a left hook landed it blinded his opponent with that now overhand right just landed right on the chin you can't get hit with that shot especially early in a fight and think that you're going to take it well here we see again an exchange with Ibar landed but his didn't land enough to detour Ali Wash Ali Wash had his eyes set on that right hand and it landed right on the button right on the money and then down goes Ibar and he wasn't getting up and you can tell the way that he failed that the fight was over never saw the punch coming Dre like you said, the left hook right there, blinded him, lined him up for that overhand right. Put him in that position for the overhand right. And Ibarra goes down. Now, this is the thing. Ali Walsh, two fights ago, I would say, uh, I don't know if he got it. I don't know if he has it. Had a trainer change, went into the lab, worked his butt off. You can see he was sparring top competition in the gyms in Las Vegas, and you can see a major improvement in his ability to box. He was in with Edgar Berlanga. Edgar Berlanga, who is the well-heralded super middleweight prospect with loads of power, so yes, it pays off to be in the gym. It pays off to be in with better fighters, and that 3-2 combination that he has been working hard towards does this right there. First round knockout, Nico Ali Walsh. Class disparity, Tim, right in front of us. Oh, yeah. This is the WBO's number three contender, an unbeaten guy from England. Oh. Another left hand comes in from Janabek. He's off balance again. He's getting swarmed. Headshot comes in. Just a matter of time. Oh, big shot comes in. And another. Oh, the uppercut floors him. And it's over. The uppercut absolutely destroys him. Slice it. Which way? And you see Janabek right here measuring with his left hand. See, when you use your left hand, you're blind. You keep your opponent occupied. And the follow-up combinations right there. And what did he do? He followed the body. He saw the opening right up the middle. The left hand right on the button right there. He saw the head drop down. Boom. Change the angle. I told you guys in the beginning, watch the straight left hand and also watch the left hand uppercut. Another left hand to the body from Dillian White. Ooh.
to my eval E from the word eraser right there, right down the pipe. As you see, Dillian White moving in, trying to get in the inside. Oh. Short, precise, right uppercut, right on the chin. And Timber! This is a Viper strike <laughs> right uppercut. It is so fast. <laughs> His head snaps up and down so fast. It's an instant knockout. Look at that oh right uppercut. God. From a six foot nine, 264 pound man with that speed of his right hand. He blinded him, blinded him with the jab. Move those hands, right uppercut, right up the middle. Here it comes at real speed. Watch this. Oh, right on the chin, instant knockout. When a man that big, with that much leverage, coming from that distance, strikes that punch, it is TNT. Crown him the king. Tyson Fury annihilates Dylan White with one punch. Gentlemen, I received my instructions in the dressing room. You know what we're here for. Remember to protect yourself at all times. With fire, that's just the way it is. For better or worse. And wow, wow, and wow is all I can say about the monster as he does it at home. He never gave the man an opportunity to get into this fight. He was poised, he was calm and calculated, and the big right hand that landed at the end of the first round started all the trouble for Nanito De Nair. He was never able to recover because in a way, it's so efficient with his punches. He doesn't waste anything. He rarely opens himself up to be caught himself. The mayor tried to land the shots, but the explosiveness and the power proved to be too much. They're looking for a reason. Anderson has to give it to him. But look at the pace. That Anderson, no, he can box, but look at the pace that he's fighting at. Oh, Max Shell comes in. This fight is over. Jared Anderson stomping his way to victory. Chopped down the forest. Jerry Forrest done in two. Here he is. He just needed to get Forrest in the right shot. That's the right hand right there. Stood him up. Another shot on the top of the head. That pretty much had Forrest out on his feet. And it's the right stoppage at the right time. He switched up his game. He threw a lot more punches in that first round. He didn't need to do that this time around. He let the punishment soak in, and now just the right shot will get us to go home. And he came out in the first round in the southpaw stance. Then he switched orthodox. That shows you how versatile he is. He's versatile. And the amount of punches that he threw, and the punching powers you gotta deal with, the reflexes, and just that toughness right there. That's the difference. That's what I'm looking for in a heavyweight. Who's right hand to the body is a good one. And a big right hand that comes in. Three one from that away. Big combination scores the knockdown here in round 11. That power that away comes through, and he gets it done at 11. Dismisses an unengaged Paul Butler by hitting the accelerator and putting out a show. And now Oye Inouye is now the first fighter from Asia to be a four belt undisputed champion. All four are his. That's the breakdown process. As it continues. Oh! Digs in, just stepped to it instead of going with the jab. He just turned it over on the inside, that short little underneath hook to the body, and now a one two. As you can see, Anderson here in the final minute of round number two taking complete control. Another big body shot. Damaging left hand comes in. And a knockdown scored in the final 
seconds of round number two. What a beatdown. Another knockout victory for Jared Anderson. Now, this is pretty much target practice right there. You see Bro Channing trying to block that body work. But Jared Anderson locating the head. Once you go down to the body, you get your opponent protecting his body. The head definitely will be open. Nice, short, tight left hook right there on the inside from Anderson, and then the follow-up, the fact that he can fight from any position, it doesn't matter which way his opponent goes. He never has his back to his opponent because he can fight from the southpaw stance in any position. There he is in the southpaw position. Beautiful skinny left, or skinny right, right down the, right down the middle right there. Here it is, skinny right, boom. Beautiful shot right there from Jared Anderson. He's in that last round and Joyce has responded. He's gone, left hand, left hand from Joyce. And is he going to get up? I'm not sure he is. The count's at seven, eight, nine. And he's counted out, it's all over. Joe Joyce by knockout in the 11th round. Yeah, unbelievable here from Joe Joyce. Big, long, long-range left hook, bang on the button. And um, Joseph Parker, we know how tough he is. He took some big shots here tonight. But this one he just couldn't get up from. Look, you can see his eyes are gone. Down he goes. And uh, like I said, icing on the cake for, for Joe Joyce, in my opinion, because that was a dominant display. It wasn't just a lucky punch. He set it up. Good shot. Down Joseph Parker goes. Let's have a look at it from this angle. Bang! Side of the face, quite high towards the temple, that's a cracking shot, a and big, a great performance. Absolutely, a big, a great intimidating man, Joe Joyce, great stamina, and he performed right the way through and rightly celebrated. He knew that was the performance of his career. I tell you... Target practice right now for Sheehy. Ooh. Those big legs hold him up, Timmy. No, the big legs didn't right. hold him up. It's about to be nasty. He's got the legs of a municipal statue, but oh, he's about, about as mobile. Nasty. And this should end. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. That's okay, that's there it. we go. That's it. <laughs> he said, I'm good. Look, I'm you know, this is pretty much target practice right here. Right hand, she he. I mean, his right hand is so sharp and so accurate. Comes out lightning fast. He doesn't telegraph it. Well, he telegraphs it right there. He pulls it back a bit. But at that point, he knew that Bowles was definitely was damaged. It? I thought he was the dangerous. What was he got? Hurt snake is a dangerous snake? It's great. Ooh, Ooh, nice jab from Martinez. And there's a left hook that puts Martinez to sleep. The dynasty continues as Emiliano Vargas proves why he is El General, the general. Because it look, it look, look at <laughs> He turned the left hook over, people. Look at him, how he turned this left hook. Oh, my goodness. On the chin. Oh, look at Downstairs, okay. Swings the shot, boom. Right on the money. Turns it over perfectly. You want to know why he went down like that? Because he turned that shot over. He didn't slap with it. Down, thumb down. All of this is part of the process, part of the plan. You got to go through different things in that ring. So as you climb the ladder, ladder, you're going to. Oh, he catches him that time. Right there. Great shot there. And Keyshawn slow to get to that neutral corner. Davis can finish him right here in round five. Right hand, left hand combination. Head is snapped back. Davis on the go. Two left hands. Oh, what a big shot that was. This is over. Sean Davis, 6-0, five knockouts. When it was time to get nasty, he did. He got into that rhythm, like Coach Bomax said, took a half step to the side, and that right hand has been a trouble, has been trouble for Tienda all night long. For some reason, when he gets hit right there, he can't respond right. His legs go, he went down. And again, this young fighter right now is the best finisher out of all the young fighters. 
He gets you hurt. You're not getting out that round. How about the left hand that came in in the midst of that rally after the knockdown? And then he snaps his head back as well right there. Bad intentions on every single shot oh. that he threw right there. That's a mentality. You can't teach that. You either got that or you don't. That left hand that you saw moments ago that backed him up to the ropes, that was so damaging. And keep in mind, it comes after the sharp right hand. Just a little bit of a pullback yeah. on the right hand. And, and, he it and, to and the it's side a good stoppage by the referee because I was getting ready to get real ugly. Oh, there were multiple times that yes. the head was snapped back of Tienda. Without Cabeza. Oh! Look at Xander Zayas! Check out this nasty Mount slot Venus. change by Xander right there. Opponent would throw a last seen your head. You see the right hand right there? Miss from his opposition. A spotter. But then the left hook comes right down the middle, turned it right over. Athleticism and skill. Oh! And that proves it. And that's over. And let the celebration begin for now the 10th knockout for Xander with an X. And X just marked the spot. Look at this setup right here. Xander's eyes. Beautiful setup, off the jab, hook, then right hand, looping right hand. Boom, ran right into it. Espada was trying to exit. Kept that lead hand down as he was trying to get away. Right hand, right on the chin, sending Espada to the canvas. Beautiful shot right there on the chin, right on the money from Xander Zayas. Zayas. Zayas led and he countered in this sequence right here. And you see him go to the left with the jab. And Espada thought he was out of trouble, but he didn't know that a looping right hand from Xander Zayas is on the way. Was gonna hit him right on the button, put him on the seat of his pants, and boom, just like that. That happened in a split second. But it was all set up by a two-punch combination. A jab, a waist hook, and an overhand right. And that got Xander Zayas the result and the finish that he was looking for. Position. He has some personal plans coming up. Oh! So down. And there is the knockdown scored in the opening moments of round seven. Beautiful up jab. Blocking Kampa's efforts. Ooh. Left uppercut, right uppercut, short right drives down. A lot of blood coming from the nose of Kampa. Headshot after headshot, short oh right hand, God. a beat down in round seven. The take back, he just took what he wanted there in that round. Yes, he did. And here it comes. Let the celebration begin. Old school Tiafimo backflip. A lot of brutality going on in this round. Beautiful right cross right there. Nice up jab right up the middle. That was so fast and so accurate. Beautiful counter right there by Tiafimo Lopez. Catch, boom, boom. Kampa never saw that jab coming, that up jab. Beautiful shot right there from Tiafimo Lopez. And that came after six and a half rounds of punishment. Didn't come early in this fight. Teo may have to go about getting the knockouts at 140 pounds a little bit different than he did at 135. Now he knew he had Kampa going. So then you see him transform into the old Teofimo Lopez at 35, standing right there, planting his feet, knowing that if I just get the right shot in there, I'm gonna get Tony Weeks to do just what he did, step in and save Pedro Kampa. A light heavyweight prospect, Dante Benjamin, who's quick, has great punch selection, and pushes back. And I think there's a cut already on the face of Corey Thompson. Come on, Corey, I'm wearing a light colored suit. <laughs> hey. He's just all over Corey Thompson. The ropes hold him up, and it's called a knockdown. He jumped him. Benjamin kind of punched himself out. He's coming for it now. And there goes Thompson down for the charge. second time. Won his pro debut in two minutes and five seconds. Went the distance last time and puts him down for the there third time. And a referee, Steve Nelson, stops the fight. First knockdown right here. As you can see, Thompson deferred into that no man's land position, leaning on his back foot to the right, got hit right on the temple. And you see the follow-up shots right here. 
And the reason why the referee called that a knockdown was because the ropes was there. If the ropes weren't there, then Thompson would have been down. The second knockdown, you see Benjamin right now trying to locate the head. He's throwing combinations. He finally locates it with a nice flurry, straight punches right down the middle. Catching Thompson. And here's the end right here. Benjamin took his time right there, located the head once again with the jab, everything off the jab, nice little, and it's all control. Everything's about control. I didn't like that leaping, mm -hmm. <laughs> leaping hook right there, but I do like that straight left hand. Look oh, at that. and there it is. Why did you like it? Because it is damaging. I'm trying to tell Five. you. Has the angles, who studies the greats in the sport, and that's a knockdown. Go down there and test that body. Oh. Look at that uppercut off the jab. <laughs> you don't see that often, honestly. Each shot is vicious. He's got bad intentions, but he's under control. But this fight has to be over. And finally, Steve Nelson Where's just the before the bell rings. Look at the first knockdown right here. Look at, look at the nice little pool right there. Straight left hand right down the middle. This is a young man that understands distance. See, he's not crowding himself. He's allowing himself to be able to extend with his left hand. Another extension, you see right here, Mason stepping in, he sees the counter right away. The glove, no, it didn't touch the canvas. But, but that hurt. shot, definitely, he was hurt. And this is the end of the fight. This is just target practice right here. The referee steps in, saw enough, it's all good. I, I just, you know, I feel for Fernandez because these, these shots right here were unnecessary, honestly. See, now that's what I'm talking about right there. And Jason Vargas is making him fight now. He said, like, you want to come in here and play? Maybe he'd like to more play for one because that right hand sent him backwards and then Jason Vargas ended up on the canvas. You know, when you're throwing power shots like that, you got to be careful. You put yourself, uh, get yourself out of position, especially when you miss. Ooh, nice left hook to the shot. liver. And down goes Vargas for the second time. He's not getting up That's from it. this one. That's it, man. Six, that liver shot. Seven. That's in you eight, home. Nine, he's eight. still, he's Buenas strong. noches. Okay. Nah, Lopez is just, he's just tricky. He's very tricky in the ring. He started up, up, up top with combinations. He got his man going backwards to see. And that's the perfect time to attack your opponent. Because look, he's trying to get away. He's not set to punch. He's defensively, his defense isn't up at, at all. And then that shot right there. Right around the elbow, calls the damage right there on Vargas. Check it out again. Here he is, got him dropped down. Mm. That nice little short uppercut, like a fake uppercut with the right hand, and then coming around the elbow, surprising shot right there. See, there's a punch missing for Nico. When he throws that one-two combination, oh, good body shot right there. Definitely, oh, oh, yeah. And with that body shot, Ooh. the knockdown is scored. Shot from Nico Ali Walsh. That's it. Knockout by the body shot, just the way he wanted. And that's why he's coming to Timmy Bradley and said, I told you. Led to this moment right here from Nico Ali Walsh. He recognized it. Boom, he threw it right to one to the left side. And then a beautiful left hook that was solar plex slash liver. And it sat Sanchez down. Sanchez could take. The head shot, but the body shots will have you trying to make some tough decisions on that canvas right there. Sanchez couldn't get up. That right hand was knock, knock to the body. Knock, knock. That one, who's there? Left hook to the liver. That's what's there. And down goes Sanchez. Listen, Beautiful I've said, place. I've said this shot. before. It's my favorite knockout to watch in the sport because of the slightly delayed reaction right there. Where yeah. <laughs> Sanchez is still throwing a punch then realizes, hold on a second, my whole system is shutting down. Did you hear that? Real speed, listen. Oh. You get hit with that kind of shot flush, all of a sudden, you don't want to win as bad as you thought you did when you came into the fight. It was two in a row. It was two in a row. Boom, 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 boom. Well placed body shot right there. What I like tonight about Nico was he kept his composure. He never seemed flustered in the ring. He had a plan. He stayed under control. He used his jab up and down. Pedro Navarrete had a sense of urgency in the corner telling him, look, I need you to have a sense of urgency because this fight is getting away from you. <laughs> and how quickly things can change.
No, but I think just threw a right uppercut, just landed the perfect shot on the liver of Baez. Just a beautiful shot that fighters throw and work on all the time in the gym. Look right uppercut, the... he didn't see it coming, boom! Didn't have a chance to brace or deflect the shot. Delayed reaction, he thought about it, he said, I need to go down. The referee counted right in front of Baez's face. He didn't have what it took to get up because that shot paralyzes that right side and it takes all the wind out of you. My goodness. Baez did a good job at avoiding leaning forward that time. He leaned a little bit over that front knee. Now, but that they set him up with that uppercut just to get him to bring those arms in and then came around that right elbow right in the liver. Well placed. Well placed. Bam. That set up. That was a setup combination right there that ended this match. Oh, right hand from Floyd Diaz. Put Salome on the seat of his pants. Catch him up top with something hard. You can set him up. I don't know if it's blood coming out of the ear that's on the Ooh. back of the head of Salome, but there's a one-two combination and in steps Daniel Sandoval because Pedro okay. Salome was in bad shape. Salome was a definitely stoppage bad victory, the second in Floyd Diaz's career, who improves to 6-0. It's a beautiful shot right here. He's a southpaw stance. He pushes off, gets a little distance, as you can see, and boom. Pulled the trigger so fast right there. Blazing fast, right down the middle, right hand. You see the lead hand of Salome down. He hit him right on the button. Mm. That's all it takes, look at that. Timing and precision, this and, is how it ended, Tim. And check out the end right here. You know, kid kept his composure, landed another right hand, the same punch, a little sharper right down the middle. You see the referee stepped in, seen enough, seen enough of the hurt that he's gonna put on him. You see the legs wobble immediately. Yeah, but see, that's that's exactly what the referee saw. He saw that response right there. You see the legs right there. You see the eyes kind of squint a bit. He saw a man in there that needed to be survived. Great work right there by Diaz. Great knockout. Lewis, I can't come out to San Diego except for those six weeks. But so far, so good. And down goes Marquez. And idolizing, I said, what do you think about Stephen Shaw? He just texts back, I like. Yeah. Oh, down for the second time. And it seems that way because that la that right hand is the poison for any South Point. It's very effective against Marquez. And the left hook. Mm. Downstairs, that's the one that hurt him. And down for the third and final time is Bernardo Marquez as Stephen Shaw proves that his name is true. Big Statement. shot shot. Statement. Tonight he came in, he told us his southpaws will be no issue. A little quick little jab right there, got some distance. Mm. We see a short left and a right hand that buzzed and hurt Marquez, and he followed up with the right shots from the right range. That can be tricky for a right-hander fighting a left-hander, but not for Stephen Shaw. We just see him in the right range, just letting the shots go, not too close, not too far apart, and he had bad intentions on every shot that he landed, and Marquez felt that. We see Market, we see Shaw come in right now and try to close the show. Another shot right there. Didn't seem like it was much, but we see right here for a big man like Shaw to land a clean shot like that on the side of the ear, it can have some crazy things going on in the head where you need to take a knee like Marquez did. Here we see half step rack right there from Shaw. Another half step back. This is a big man doing this. This is a big man with this kind of skill and wherewithal to step back, take half steps back, and get leverage on every shot. That he Epney might not win this fight, but he's certainly trying to land that right hand. Mm -hmm. He's trying to walk Torres into a trap. Oh, nice left there from Torres, and he puts him through the ropes momentarily, and down goes Hefney. Yeah, just let those combinations fly, especially when you have your man up against the rope. Torres right now just letting those hands go. Nice little short left hand right on the chin. And you see the equilibrium was knocked off by Hefney. Boom, nice little short shot right around that, right on, right around that glove. Pull from him, but stay who you are. Yes. Nice combination punching from Torres, go, left hook go, inside. Hefney goes down to a right hook to the body. Two. More accumulation than anything. Yeah, that's what it is, accumulation effect. You know, Hefney looking for a place to lay down, like Dre said. Just staying busy offensively.
It's not going to be long for Hepney. He's fatigued. He's getting beat up. It's going to be that right shot that lands that, that ends the night. And he's looking. That might have been it. It was to the top of the head with the right, and down goes Hefney. And Richard Torres gets his fourth knockout victory, this time the longest fight of his professional career. <laughs> If you come this way, this is this works at this level. That's it, that's it. That's and the left hand it, is dynamic. That's it, that's it. That's the aggressiveness it, no is respectable. Because I was sitting off side with, with some casual fans and big sports fans and, and some football folks, and they could not take their eyes off of Richard Torres. Exactly, because he brings that action. You know, I love a sweet boxer. Let me wrong. I love it. I enjoy watching a sweet boxer and a guy dissect the fighter the right way. But I also like aggressive fighters, guys that like to bring that action in pain inside the ring. That's what you see from Richard Torres. And there is Lomachenko making his final preparations. The Venom gloves are on. That camo with the Ukrainian flag. Of course, one of the great stories in all of sports this year of the decision that so many Ukrainian athletes made, but specifically the championship level boxers. And Lomachenko at the height of his career with the opportunity to fight for millions upon millions, to fight for the undisputed lightweight championship. All he's ever wanted is to be undisputed. Made a decision to leave the sport, to go home, to serve, to be with his fellow countrymen in the midst of the conflict when his country was invaded. And now tonight he returns to the ring. And that is happening in just moments. You know what happened to Ramirez? Came in here with a knockout mentality, mm -hmm. coming off of the Abraham Nova fight mm -hmm. and all the love he got from that. He got out of rhythm. His rhythm was knockout. His rhythm was walk you down yes. in the big left hand. That didn't work. Now he's having to switch back and forth between trying to box, but he really just, he can't get it, get his hey. shot right there. Too late. Sends him back Too with a left hand. Now That's he jumps out about, about the ropes. Baby. Can he close things out here in round nine? Now he's walking straight into him as you see blood coming from the mouth of Romero. He might be done. Here comes Ramirez with plenty of time to work with. And oh, oh. there's a left hand and another big left hand. And it is a knockout victory for Robesi Ramirez. There it is. See, this is what I was hoping that Ramirez would do. I knew that left, looping left hand was going to be danger for Romero from the opening bell because he kept his keeps his right hand down low he was biting on every single feint and that is Ramirez's MO he looks for that shot that backhand great finish from Ramirez I thought he fought a mm, cautious fight but he got the, found the kill shot, Dre. Found the kill shot and ended this match tonight. He finally found it. Great finish. But things are going to step up from this fight forward. And Ramirez needs to not forget who he's always been. But we're at a different angle than the referee is. All that offense from Mason right now. Oh, and oh, that one puts goodness. down Barrera. My goodness. He tells Johnny Callis that he's okay. He's ready to go, but just under a minute here in round three, can Abdullah Mason finish the show? Big body shot there with the right hand too, back up top with the left. Good counter shot, and that one puts him down again for the second time here in round three. Contrary to what we and everybody else just heard, they're gonna let Angel Barrera continue, and I think that they should give him another chance. He said he's okay, he wants to go. We'll see what we see here. You know, Barrera, you're a fighter, Tim. You know he's gonna wanna fight this out. And look, he, he ain't one around. He ain't one around. The referee better save his life. And, and there it is. He stepped in, stopped the fight, had seen enough. Mason in total control right here. Everything was all established off that solid jab right there. But beautiful, nice little swivel jab right there. Straight left hand right down the middle. You know, like I told you in the beginning, Barrero was coming out with his wide shots. A straight shot, a beat a wide shot nine times out of ten, depending on what angle you're on now. I just think this was unnecessary. I, I think that they should have stopped the fight a round before, you know, but the, the, the ref and the doc decided to give him a chance. 
you know, Abdullah was going to take him out, no doubt about it. He felt that he was weakening, and just like the shark, when he smells blood in the water, it's time. <laughs>